So if you have a Python project which is written in fast API framework and you want to learn how to dockerize it and create your own image which includes your project in it, you are in the right place and also welcome to the next video in my dockerization video series and stick with me to learn more. YouTube, how are you doing? I hope you're learning more day by day. We are in the next video in my dockerization video series and in this video actually we're going to see how to dockerize a fast API project and create our own image and later we'll see how to run our containers from the image that we created using a docker compose file. So without any delay let's get down to work. So as you can see over here, I have the very basic fast API application. And in that I'm just simply importing the fast API, creating an app and a very basic get API, which will listen to the slash route and the function that will be handling that route will just simply return a JSON with the key of a message and the value of hello world. So in order to be able to run this project, I'm going to need some requirements, some dependencies that I have defined in the requirements.txt file, which is located exactly in the same path that my Docker file exists. So basically I'm just installing fast API and uvicorn, the fast API in order to be able to actually create a fast API project and use its modules and uvicorn in order to be able to run that project. And lastly, in the Docker file, I have the instructions, which is going to use the Python 3.10 alpine. And next I'm declaring a working directory, which will be slash app inside the image that I'm creating. And the next step, I'm just going to copy the requirements.txt file to the dot, which will resolve to slash app. And as the next instruction, I'm going to actually run a command pip install r requirements.txt. So as you know, this will try to install the packages, the dependencies that I need in order to run this project. And next, I'm just simply copying dot to dot which will copy everything that are located in the same path that the Docker file exists to the dot, which will eventually resolve to the slash app inside the image. So basically the reason that I'm first copying the requirements.txt file and then copying the rest of the project is that in Docker, when we creating images, Actually, each instruction that we write in here in the Docker file will be a layer to the image that is being created and the Docker engine will try to use the cached versions if there are no changes in the previous layers. And the reason behind this, as you might have guessed by now, is that if my requirements.txt file does not change and I don't have any new dependencies added to my project, when I want to create the later versions of this image, Docker will detect that there is no changes and it'll try to use the cached versions unless I explicitly say to Docker, do not use the cached versions, which will be some rare cases. And as a result, I'll be able to create my images very fast and do not need to install the dependencies every time that I want to create the versions of this image. So I hope I have given you some idea behind the reason for this. I'll actually leave a link down below if you want to deep dive in the Docker image layers and caching stuff. So moving back to the Docker file, as the next instruction, I have the command instruction, which will be uvicorn app.main colon app dash dash host I'll pass the 0.0.0, .0 and dash dash port will be 8000 basically this command instruction will be the command that 
will be run when we try to create a container out of this image and its difference with the run instruction is that the run instruction will actually be run when the docker engine is trying to create image it will actually go ahead and run the pip install and go grab the dependencies files and store it in that image but it won't actually run the command instruction when it's trying to create the image and actually when we want to create a container and run our application it will be the default command that will be run as we run that container but if we want we can also replace the command when we try to create a container so that's almost it we can now try to create our image so if i hit ls over here i have my docker file over here so the command that i'll be able to use to build my image will be docker build dash t with the dash t switch i'll be able to actually pass a name and a version to my image that i'm creating so i'll pass awesome flask with the version of latest so the latest version will be the default version if we don't pass any tag version it will automatically use it as the default value and next i'll pass dot as the build context to the docker and if i hit enter actually i'm expecting the docker engine to go ahead and build the image as you can see because i've created that image with the exact same files it just go ahead and took all the layers from the cache and it didn't actually go ahead and grab the dependency files and install them from the internet and it just took it from the cache so because of this reason it might take a little bit longer for you just be patient and let the docker build command finish and now that we have the desired docker image we're ready to run our containers and for running containers i'm going to use docker compose file so i'll cd to the parent directory so i'm going to create a file called docker-compose.yaml or yml and in this file i'll be able to actually define my services that i want to create so the first thing i'm going to name its version next i'll say services i'll name it as the fast api underline app and as the first thing i'll pass the image name that it needs to use so i'll pass awesome flask as the image name so i'm not going to actually say the latest and actually i'll let the docker image to detect that i haven't passed a tag name and it'll tr actually try to use the latest as the default version and next i'll try to define the ports that will be mapped the ports inside the container i'll say 8000 to be mapped to the 8000 inside the container and actually i'll try to declare a restart policy and i'll pass always as the value so the docker engine will actually try to restart this container if it stops by any reason and with this very basic configuration i'm actually ready to run my container so i'll save the file i'll switch to the terminal if i say docker compose up dash d as i expected i actually get my docker container so if i say docker compose ps i should be able to see the container that i defined in the docker compose file and the default command that it's using is the command that i defined in the docker file the state is up and the ports that are mapped are 8000 in my machine to the 8000 inside the container so my container is up and running if i switch to the browser i say localhost port 8000 and as i'm expecting i'll get the message hello world that is being returned from the fast api project that is running as a docker container in my machine
So I'll put the GitHub repository that I have all the files and configurations so you'll be able to easily access them. Don't forget to watch my other videos in my video series. I have Dockerization for many different technologies. If you have any questions, if you have any recommendations, I'll be in the comment section down below. So I hope you learned something new in this video. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that, I hope to see you in the next videos.